episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader of online cybersecurity education. Join more than 10,000 professionals from over 120 countries to learn security online. I'm Damien from Pentester Academy TV, and I want to welcome you to another episode of The Toolbox, where we showcase the latest and greatest open source tools. Add them to your tool collection today. Let's take a look at Proof of Work Shield by Ray Xiang. Hi, everyone. Um, it's Ray Xiang here at Pentester Academy. And I'd like to share with you a project that I've been maintaining for a while, and it's called Proof of Work Shield. So before we get into the project, I'd like to have go through a brief introduction about me. My name is Ling Xiang, and I'm currently an amateur backend and blockchain developer and an undergraduate at National Taiwan University. I also consider myself a crypto enthusiast. The links below are links to my GitHub profile and my personal website. So what is Proof, Proof of Work Shield? Proof of Work Shield is an open source project dedicated to fight videos with Proof of Work. It's easy to set up and does not require any changes to the original server. But how did this all come into being? It all started back in 2020 when there there were multiple DDoS attacks across the world and it got me thinking are there any projects that can help with help with mitigating the attacks and the answer was there were no open source projects most of the projects either are charged or suggest some kind of adding maybe adding recaptcha or some modifications to the original source code and there was one about changing the low-level UDP protocol. And that doesn't work because you require a special, specially made client in order to use that protocol. And also, I don't like captures that much because in most cases, it no normally takes me like two tries to get through it. So let's imagine a scenario. We've got a web service here and an attacker that DDoSs or spams the server. The traditional way to mitigate this is to scale horizontally. And until you have enough bandwidth that the attacker cannot attack. By doing this way, it costs a lot. And there are e efficiency issues because you need to synchronize the data between the servers. And in some cases, this way simply is not possible, either because of technical, technical reasons and design models. For technical reasons, it may be because that maybe your site is hosted on WordPress and you do not know PHP well enough to modify the, modify the code. And maybe it's because um, like the design pattern reason. Um, one of the reasons may be that um, your service is the matchmaking service in a stock exchange. Those servers cannot run concurrently because there are fairness issues if you do so. So the more modern way is to set up multiple edge servers in multiple AS and ISPs around the world, letting the user connect to those servers with minimal propagation delay. And after some basic workload or compression done on the edge server, the data stream is then sent or proxied to the original server. The infrastructure we just mentioned is provided as a service by this company called Cloudflare. They provide CDNs and reverse proxies for our customers. And they utilize H capture against DDoS, which is like what we see on the right side here. One of their sell points is that there's no need to change server code. However, there are some problems in this service. So first of all, it makes you completely dependent on Cloudflare because all of your data streams and traffic goes through Cloudflare. So uh, they can track and analyze your traffic and have basically a very big amount of control over your service. The second is that, um, as I said before, Personally, I do not like CapJust because it, it requires manual work and 
So careful looking. And sometimes even if you do the capture carefully, you sometimes just take uh, mistake a car for a boat, something like that, and you have to do the whole thing over again. The third is that it's not very customizable, as you can see on the right side. It's just, just the standard user interface. And from my point of view, I think it's not. it doesn't look quite good. So in order to change the layout or maybe just adding a worker or a web application firewall, you have to pay for mostly everything. So what if there's no manual action required to pass the Turing test? And in this case, it was the H captcha in the cloud there. And what if there's a more customizable and open source solution to the DDoS problem? So here's where Proof of Work Shield comes in. And similar to Cloudflare, you do not need to make any modifications to your origin server code. And it's said to be containerized for mass deployment. And since it uses proof of work, you don't need to manual do any, manually do anything. And since it's, it uses proof of work, it's mathematically proven to be unbypassable. And we've got additional features like automatic IP session banning and integrated WAF, which uh, is a paid service on, on Cloudflare. So we'll go through proof of work very quickly since it's not the main point here. Um, basically, it just uh, it utilizes the reversing of one-way hash functions like MD5 or SHA-256. Those functions create checksums from um, a big chunk of data and since it's a many-to-one relation, you can't tell the original content by reversing it. So you'll need to brute force the original content until you get the same checksum. And pr proof of work is used commonly on cryptocurrencies, and it's basically unbypassable and requires the end machine to actually conduct the calculations. It's proven mathematically that there's no way to cheat. So we compare CAPTCHA to proof of work. CAPTCHA doesn't, CAPTCHA requires you to go through the images and do the, do as the description says. But for proof of work, you just need to set it out. And while CAPTCHAs are often solvable, proof of work almost guarantees you that you'll pass just one time. A reason that most um, captures like recapture are getting harder and harder every year is because there's a certain utilization of machine learning used to crack the captures. And other than those captures getting harder, captures like recapture also deploy some sort of analytics in inside your browser. But for proof of work, none of that is necessary. And also, captures are dependent on the image source because you simply don't have like a million images stored in a server somewhere that you own. But for proof of work, generating the prefix and difficulty required is just a few lines of code. And another concern for captures, such as uh, the larger ones, is that it uses some universal cookies for tracking since those captures are used by many services and websites. But for proof of work, you control what you track because the cookies are issued by you. So here's how it works from a request flow point of view. The user first sends a request to a site, say we have a website.com here, and proof of work shield generates a random prefix and, a, and assigns a difficulty to that prefix and return to the user as a ray ID. The user then calculates the nonce, which should fit the which should fit the following criteria. Um, they brute force the nonce until it fits the equation below. Uh, SHA two five six prefix plus nonce equals the checksum with the first d bits of the of the checksum zero. The client's browser then sends the verification request to Proof of Work Shield, which validates it. And if the nonce is invalid, which 
does not happen in most cases, you have to start it over again. But in most cases, the validation passes and the proof of work shield begins to proxy the request to the protected server and sets an auth cookie to the client's browser. So if we see it in a decision flow way, when a request comes in, its IP is first checked against the IP blacklist and the header is checked to validate the session and checked against rate limit and blacklisting. Then the request passes through a web application firewall. And if the request is a non-submission -sub request, it's validated. But if the session is already validated before this, um, proof of work should just proxies the request to the original protected server. And here are the links to the GitHub project and the Docker container page. And configuration is documented in the following links. We're not going into it because um, the environmental variables and configuration settings are already mentioned there. So if you want to scale it up, you can use the containerized version and deploy it with maybe Kubernetes or Docker Swarm. A note is that you'll need to have some sort of overlay network or isolate the protected server with firewalls um, to make it only connectable by the proof of work shield instances or anyone could just connect to your origin server just directly. And a tip is that you can use those pay as go plans that charge you by CPU utilization, maybe those um, like um, AWS EC2, for instance. And they're basically, they basically don't cost anything unless there's a sudden surge in the internet traffic against your web service. Some future work. Uh, first is to support, support more protocols because uh, currently only HTTP and HTTPS are supported and a more detailed statistics monitoring and a control dashboard for a graphics user interface. So now let's do a very quick demo. We've got the website here, um, a very cool one maybe, that uh, is currently unprotected and can be hit by any sort of videos or spam attacks. Okay, so we're going to protect it. And we're going to use the uh, containerized approach here. And as you can see, we've got an example template here, but we're going to dial down on some of the thresholds in order to let you see what happens when we hit the session threshold and IP threshold. Yeah, we've dialed down the rate session limit to 50 requests and 30 requests on the IP threshold. I'm going to start it now. Okay, so now we've got a proof of work shield running at port 8080 here. Okay, it's calculating the nonce, submitting a result, and starts proxying to the original server. Now let's try to hit the rate limiting. Yeah, we got it. And the uh, session ban. Yeah, now IP is banned. This is sort of how it works here, and it's the end of the demo. Thank you, Ray Xiang, for your wonderful presentation and demo. You know, it's very delightful to see uh, how comprehensive uh, demo that you have done for the people. Before we end off the session, uh, I do have one question for you. Uh, is there any aspects in the in the tool that you really want people to work on to get it running inside these tools itself? You know. Is there any dream aspects? I know that you did mention there's a few things that you want to work on the tools. Is there any like the particular dream aspect that you would like the community to work together with you to get it running? Like I uh, before uh, mentioned before in the future work, 
I think that、um, the the most important thing that la- that is lacking from this、uh, proof of work shield is that、um, it doesn't have、uh, an actual dashboard that has a graphics interface, and I think having it will actually help with some people who aren't that tech savvy in this line of work, and it may also help with. Uh, may, may help with getting more users to use、uh, Proof of Shield. Yeah, yeah. I I think that that makes a、uh, pretty sense as well. You know, you need to make it visually pretty so people will take a use at it. But you know, I do hope that you know, and、uh, our viewers that views this、uh, two box episodes, that they are able to help you in terms of these aspects. Uh, to build up your tools more visually and make it even better.、Uh, on behalf of Pen Tester Academy TV, I want to thank you once again for coming on board to this episode of the Toolbox、uh, to present proof proof of work shield. Thank you, Ray Xiang, for your participation and、uh, and to all our viewers out there.、Uh, thank you so much for watching this episode, and we do hope you enjoy the presentation by Ray Xiang and his demo and. Uh, all the information and contact details will be provided in our video description below, so you guys can reach out to him if、uh, you are interested in this project. Thank you, and hope Ray Xiang you enjoy the ep- the your presentation in this episode, and do look forward to other tools that you created. Thank you so much, Ray Xiang. Thank you, Damian. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, Ray Xiang, once again for coming on board to this episode of the Toolbox. For more information of these tools, do see our description box below. Subscribe to our channel and stay tuned to the next episode of the Toolbox. Toolbox.